So let's talk now about the integral formulation of the time evolution equation. So previously we've talked about this in a differential form. Uh, now we'll introduce a, an integral formulation of the time evolution equation by introducing this unitary operator um, u, which depends on the time that we evolve to and the time that we start from. So t0 um, is what we uh, is the time at which we have a initial state phi of t0 described by this vector. Uh, and then the unitary operator u of time t and t0 will, con will transform this initial state to a final state. Because of normalization, uh, u has to be unitary. Um, so phi at a time t uh, in scalar product with itself has to be equal to 1 for all times. So that only is true if u um, adjoint is equal to u. There are some other, of course, uh, relatively straightforward um, properties that this unitary operator has to satisfy. So first of all, if we have two consecutive time evolution from t to t1 and then from t1 to t, or from rather backwards, from t0 to t1 and then t1 to t, that has to be able to, to be described by another unitary transformation from t0 directly to t. And here we could theoretically go from t0 to a time t1 that is actually further in the future than t, um, as long as no measurements interrupt this, uh, this reversible unitary evolution of uh, the quantum system. So as long as the, there are no measurements that cause a quantum state collapse. Of course, the unitary operator um, from a time to the time itself has to be equal to the identity, since that, that we, we don't expect there to be any change in, uh, um, in the wave function. And the inverse of uh, an operator of this unitary operator if we go if we look at the unitary operator from a time t2 to a time t1 that will be the inverse of the operator from a time t1 to t2 uh, and because of the unitary property that will be the adjoint of the uh, unitary um, operator that describes the transformation from t1 to t2 now if we have this unitary operator that describes the changes uh, from one um, for one vector state to another vector state in time uh, those will have to satisfy that that means that this unitary operator will have to satisfy the the differential equation as we described earlier in the in the fourth postulate so if we plug this expression into the the differential expression for the time evolution equation then we'll find the differential equation for the unitary operator itself so the time derivative of the unitary operator will have to be related to the linear um, to the Hamiltonian multiplied with the unitary operator. And um, that also means that we can write our uh, Hamiltonian in terms of this uh, unitary operator, the time derivative, um, evaluated at time t0. So the Hamiltonian at the initial time will be uh, the time derivative of the unitary operator as expressed or as evaluated at that initial time. Now this is a, this unitary or this differential equation um, for u, which seem to be relatively easy to solve since it's linear in the time. Uh, it's a first order linear differential equation. Um, so uh, one would expect that this, uh, um, this would be relatively easy to solve. However, um, in general, Hamiltonian at a time t1 and Hamiltonian at time t2 are not commuting with each other. Um, so that means that uh, this becomes a little bit more difficult. We can't, uh, we can't simply write down an exponential and expect this to work. Uh, so we can simply write down u as an exponential uh, of, uh, of the Hamiltonian. What we can do is look at a couple of special cases where it is easier to solve. So let's look first at an isolated um, quantum system uh, that is isolated from any external environment. So there's no changes in external fields, uh, there's no interactions with external systems. Um, so in that case, uh, it doesn't depend on time and, and uh, the initial time independently, but it only depends on, on the, the difference between the times. So think about this as uh, um, one could shift this entire system in time and there would be no difference or one could shift um, the, uh, the, the choice for, it, for the zero point in the time direction or in the time coordinate, um, and that wouldn't make a difference. So the unitary operator that depends on t and t0 in general can only depend on the difference t minus t0. So if we then look at uh, our expression that we had earlier here for the Hamiltonian expressed at time zero, or at time t0, uh, so that must now be 
um, this time derivative at t equal t0, but this only depends on the difference, t minus t0, um, so that will give us a Hamiltonian value that is independent of t0, since t0 is, uh, um, doesn't carry any value, it's only the, the difference between t and t0 that carries a value, carries any meaning. So our Hamiltonian will have to be a value that's independent of t0, or in other words, it will have to be a constant value. So for isolated systems, um, we have a Hamiltonian that's a, that's a constant. Um, so uh, of course then, if the Hamiltonian does not depend on the time because it's a constant, then we can say that uh, the commutator, which is now uh, just the Hamiltonian as a constant with a, a commutator of the Hamiltonian with itself, so that will be equal to zero. And in that case, we can um, solve our first order differential equation by writing or unitary operator, which is the diff, which depends only on the difference of t and t zero, as an exponential um, with e to the minus i over h bar, and then our Hamiltonian, which remember is a constant, so this is a number then multiplied with the difference in time uh, and times t zero. So that will be for stationary states or uh, um, for isolated systems where no um, dependence on the, the actual time, but there's only a dependence on the, the time difference, uh, the time during which there's evolution. So for those systems, we can write unitary uh, time evolution operator in this way. Okay, This will still be a multidimensional system where then or, or Hamilton will be um, a, a, constant, a constant matrix, but uh, it doesn't depend on the time. So if we now choose our time um, infinitesimally small, then t is equal to t0 plus some epsilon. Um, then we'll have our, our uh, um, exponential will be uh, e to the minus i over h bar times the Hamiltonian times this epsilon. We can expand this around the identity. We'll end up with an, a, a small first order deviation from the identity where our epsilon is multiplied with our operator h. This h, the Hamiltonian, um, is therefore called the generator of the unitary transformations in time or the, the generator of uh, time translations. Um, we'll see how this, this language of generators comes back when we talk about both um, uh, momentum uh, and uh, when we talk about um, uh, angular momentum in particular as well. So the, remember, of course, that this ignores any second order higher um, effects, but the generator is the first order deviation from the identity um, that describes our uh, unitary transformations. So let's look at an example of uh, a time evolution of a system with dimension one. So we're looking at, for example, a, a stable atom. Uh, it's, just, it's a system in dimension one, so it's really just a phase. Um, the, 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 the state of the system is described by phi of, uh, of t, where phi is just a complex number, it's not uh, it's not a vector, or, or rather it's a vector of dimension one, so it's it's just a complex number. So if you look at the phase, how this changes versus time, then we of course multiply, or we have our unitary operator here, which is again just a complex number. Or Hamiltonian is a constant um, number instead of a, a matrix, and it's just an, a number, the, uh, the energy. And if we then uh, um, write phi, we introduce our, um, our omega as, uh, as, as the ratio of e over h bar, then we just find that this changes our phase um, and uh, um, changes that with time with a frequency omega. Okay, this is all um, relatively straightforward, um, and I'm sure you've seen that before. Now let's look at evolution of a system with dimension n. So now we have n basis vectors. Um, let's assume at first that we've uh, prepared or quantum system in a state that corresponds to one of its eigenvectors. So um, we could have done by measuring the energy of the system and we would have found the eigenvector n or we would have found an, the eigenvalue corresponding to the eigenvector n. Um, so we know that the system is in that, uh, in that basis state. And then from that basis state, we can describe the, the evolution by again having our operator um, here. And so now our, our Hamiltonian um, will uh, we'll have the the energy of that quantum state of that eigenvector e sub n there and so the the system will evolve with this unitary operator e to the minus i over h bar e n multiplied with the time difference okay or uh, initial state phi at t0 is, is in this case just the um, eigenvector n 
So now if we measure the probability of um, evolving or um, probability of taking a prepared quantum state in eigenvector n evolving through phi at the, fun at the time t and then measuring a state chi, then um, that will just give us the, the you know, we'll, we'll take the scalar product of chi with phi at the time t squared. Um, we can work this out and then we'll find that this is equal to the scalar product of chi with the initial state phi at times t zero. And this doesn't change with time. So that's why we call this um, a stationary state. If we have a system prepared in an eigenvector of the Hamiltonian, then the probability of finding any, um, of, of measuring any state in that, um, uh, of measuring um, that state in any state chi is constant with time. And so it makes sense to call it a stationary state. If we uh, look at a more general case and uh, our initial phi at time t0 is not equal to a single eigenvector, then, um, so in general case, we'll have some coefficients for all of the eigenvectors. We can describe the evolution of that system and we'll see that at the time t, our coefficients will have changed um, by uh, a multiplication with this uh, unitary operator. And again, the coefficient for eigenstate n will have changed by um, a unitary operator that has the energy value E sub n in there. Okay, so, um, so that's, uh, um, that's an overview of uh, the time evolution, both uh, in the uh, differential form, as, as you saw in the previous video, and then in the unitary uh, matrix uh, integral form in this, uh, this video. So next we'll go on to um, the Heisenberg uncertainty, this temporal domain, um, with something that uh, has to be treated a little bit differently than uh, how we've looked at Heisenberg inequalities um, between two uh, linear operators per uh, earlier postures. So time evolution is somewhat different than um, the, the operators that describe physical properties. So more about that in the next video.